you know, when people sit around pissing, moaning about a problem, and a good old line comes out, somebody sh- should do something about it. But that problem's construction load related on that somebody. All right, what we are talking about today is the cancerous mentality that's causing major cost and schedule blowouts on construction projects. And a lot of it comes back to we have the wrong systems. So we'll get into that more in a minute. If, if you like this video today, it resonates with you and you think we need to get some of this happening on our project or our team needs to find out more about that and you want to work with me to make that happen, that link just there, isometricmarketing.co forward slash beanie. More details are on there or if you need a keynote speaker, the details for my manager should be on there as well, David Dean from David Dean Events. All right, so the problem is... I believe, or not I believe, I've seen it over and over and over again. And after reading this book, Scrum, The Art of Doing Twice the Work and Half the Time, I didn't just read this as well. This, All this is not bullshit, okay? I am a boilermaker by trade. That's why I use the Chroma. Worked in the construction industry for years, been a construction manager, uh, manager, superintendent for a lot of years. I used this system on a shutdown that I did up in the Pilbara once. And we absolutely know that we were undermanned. We got on the project late. All sorts of things went wrong. And this is the problem with the Gantt chart. Gantt just doesn't move quick enough to allow for all the issues. Mike Tyson has a saying, famous saying, which is everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Working on projects, particularly these days with the fast tracking and all the other stuff that goes with it, time pressures, budget pressures, constraints, safety, everything that, that's in the mix is a continuous barrage of punches to the face. And a Gantt chart just can't cope with them. It was designed for, I think, either World War I or World War II. It is outdated. We're using a tool. It's like we're going back to the... We're using something from the caveman days and we're trying to build in the 21st century. It doesn't work. That is the major problem with it. But the biggest obstacle, of course, is every client wants a Gantt. (laughs) That's what the industry does. Uh, Everyone complains about it. Everyone should say somebody should do something about it. Well, somebody is doing something about it. I am. But the way to get around that is that you have to actually run Scrum. Yes, you still need to update your Gantt and put one forward for the client. That's what the client wants. It's part of their request. You have to show them while you're running in conjunction with that, there is a better way to do this. And if you use Scrum, you can actually do it. So as I say, the solution is to use Scrum. And the other problem that the industry's got is we've got into some really bad habits. Another great book that I'm going to recommend to you today is this one called Atomic Habits. And in here, they talk about the law of marginal gains. I don't know if you can see this or not. You probably can't. Anyway, that chart shows you. I'll put a photo below here so you can see it after if you get a one percent improvement per day and there's a guy called paul acres that's written a really good book on this called two second lean and he literally gets people to go two second two minute two minute two minute lean i think anyway two second two minute doesn't matter whatever it is get hold of that book and have a read of it it's all about just doing these small incremental improvements day after day after day after day because they add up. What happens is if you improve by just 1%, so if your site improves 1% every day for the next 365 days, by the end of those 365 days, what you have is a site that's performing 37 times better than what it currently is. The downside is, and this is what's happened in the construction industry as well, and I'll make a, I'll give you a example of this again, again in a second, is that If you don't, if you go backwards by 1%, then at the end of the 365 days, you've actually gone negative, you've actually got worse. And I've seen this in the industry over and over and over again. I've worked with guys that I worked with back in 2006. And they were good at what they did back then. And everyone blew smoke up their ass. They're the greatest thing since sliced bread. They believed that. And they stayed at what they were doing in 2006. They have progressively got worse over the last 12, 13, 14 years, whatever it may be, because they haven't improved. So they've degraded just by default. 
you go and you work with the same guys now and you look at them and go, these guys are fucking hopeless. I don't know why I ever thought they were good at what they did. And that is the reason why, is because they hit a certain level and they just capped out and they stopped. They haven't improved since. And there's been all sorts of extra tools that have come into the industry in this time, emails, now we're getting augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, drones, all these sorts of things that have come into the game. And they're still stuck doing the same shit that they were doing back in 2006. So by default, they've actually gone backwards. All right, so Scrum, I'll give you a real quick rundown of how it works. Is use a whiteboard, which is awesome for supervisors, who are the guys that have to get the stuff done out in the paddock. They put on a stick at note what they're supposed to be working on and they make it very specific what they're supposed to be doing. So everyone can walk in and see exactly what's getting done. And this is what construction projects, I believe, used to run better back 20, 30 years ago than they actually do now is because again, it's just a flat piece of paper with some lines drawn on it. Supervision in particular don't relate to that very well. They need visual cues. Again, uh, when you got a scrum board with all these tickets up on the board and this work, as I say, when we did this up in the Pilbara, it absolutely killed it. Everyone can see what everyone's working on and they can see where it's progress, whether it's got to get done, being done, someone's done it, who is actually responsible for it. Another great way that you could implement the uh, one second, um, two second improvements, not two second, anyway, what it is, 1% improvements per day is in your take fives. Head at the little at the bottom of it, what's the little improvement that you made today? You get everyone stacking those small things up they become a big thing at the end of it. You end up with that 37 times better. As another great book that I'm gonna recommend, Keith Cunningham says in The Road Less Stupid, and I've read that as a marketing book, but trust me, everything in The Road Less Stupid relates to a construction site. What he says in there is, ordinary things done consistently produce extraordinary results. You wanna start getting some extraordinary results on your projects, not going to happen overnight. It's not going to be the quick fix that everyone's searching for, but start getting those small incremental improvements in place. You will see dramatic results. All right, that's it. Want some more help? Isometricmarketing.co forward slash beanie. And remember what the world's greatest showman, P.D. Barnum, said no one ever made a difference by being like everyone else. Speak soon.